My neighbor was siding his house last year. He said he had to throw away a lot of the nails because the heads were on the wrong end. What an idiot. Doesn't he know those nails are for the other side of the house? Over the last couple weeks at the Stumpy Nubs workshop, we've been making a lot of display cases for a collection of Civil War artifacts. We've been reduced to using tape to hold things together. We need more clamps. A wise old woodworker once told me, Stumpy, buy lots of clamps and use them to hold things together. Wise words. I think what he was trying to say is you can never have enough clamps, but I'm going to take it a step further. You can never have enough clamp racks. Nothing can clutter a bench like a pile of clamps, so we like to keep ours well organized and easy to put away. But in a small shop, wall space can be at a premium. Packing a lot of clamps into a small space was the plan when we designed this storage system. It holds 48 clamps in a mere 3 foot by 2 foot space. The key to the whole project is the little fingers that hold the clamps. You can lay them out with a ruler, but there's a lot to do, so a couple pairs of calipers can make quick work of it. And the little hole that the calipers leave are perfect to fit the brad point of your Forstner bit into when you head over to the drill press. While we drilled the holes three at a time, on the bandsaw we cut out the waste one at a time. Glue up on this project is best done in steps, starting with these fingerboards. And why use clamps on a clamp rack when you can use a brad nailer to hold it together while it dries? I used pine for this project because I had some laying around, but those fingers can break off pretty easily along the grain. I think plywood would have been a better idea. The problem is easily remedied by just making some support blocks for those fingers. Cut a bunch of squares and then turn them into triangles on the bandsaw. These are a little hard to clamp when you glue them up. So a brad nailer is almost a must here. The fingers on the bottom of each unit don't hold any weight, but I added some support blocks there too. Once you get the finger support boards attached to the sides, you have six units. You can stop right there and attach them to the wall just like they are, if you've got the space. This is a really versatile project. It works both ways. For a more compact system, we need to turn our six units into two units, and that means mounting some hinges. Now before you get on me about these ugly hinges, remember, clamps are heavy and door hinges are cheap. You can slap some fancy pants, brass hinges on here if you want, but my clamp rack's not going to be sagging 10 years from now. When you drill the pilot holes to mount hinges, getting it perfectly centered is vital. Otherwise when you put in the screw it's going to shift. These spring-loaded hinge drill bits are great. They've got a tapered end that fits in the hole, and it makes sure that that bit goes right dead center. It's really going to save you time and a lot of hassle when you mount your hinges. Once you get your hinges on, you're all set. It's a quick project, but it's really the best clamp rack we've used here at the Stumpy Nubs workshop. Mount it to a wall and start piling it full of clamps. The one-handed ratchet clamps work best with the handle facing out from the wall. The bar clamps go the opposite way. Look, we get a dust collection problem here in the Stumpy Nubs workshop. We have a two horsepower unit. Should be fine for what we use it for. But the joiner and the planer keep getting plugged up. And that's gotta get fixed. The complex dust collection system in the workshop is starting to show leaks at certain joints. Milling machines create bigger chips and need a lot of suction to keep the boards clear. All those leaks are now starting to add up, and that's causing a problem in some of the ducts. The biggest problem is where the hoses meet the PVC fittings in the 4-inch ductwork. Now I know they make some fittings that will take care of that, but I, I'm way too cheap. There's no way. Some of these places where the ducts have to pivot, 
it's going to be 15 20 bucks by the time you get the series of fittings that you need to do that I'm just not going to do it. The answer to the workshop problems may be this extreme tape. The box says it's better than duct tape and it better be because it's almost a buck a foot but it says it's going to create a permanent self-sealing bond. You wrap this stuff around the ductwork. Make sure you blow off all the dust first because this tape doesn't have adhesive on it. It sticks to itself and that dust can ruin things in a hurry. It stretches around and fits into all the little nooks and crannies, especially on the ribs and those hoses. And then the last end wraps over itself and it creates a permanent bond. The only way to get this stuff off is to wreck it. And that's something I like. Solved our problem. We use good aluminum tape instead of that cheap duct tape for all the the seams that don't move and then anywhere that moves or that has the flexible hose we use this extreme tape it worked great now I know this stuff is pricey and there's some other companies that make it but the extreme tape brand it's wider and it just seems to me like it's a little better value try it out I'm telling you it, it saved us a small fortune Now you did it, didn't you? What were you thinking? You went out and you bought a new tool, didn't you? You sucker. You let yourself get drawn in by their fancy marketing and their email coupons. And you can't just browse in those stores. No, they keep you in there with their free coffee and their product demonstrations. And how are you supposed to walk by an end cap without making an impulse purchase? You're the victim. But your wife doesn't see it that way. No, she always wants to spend money on things like groceries and heat. There's no sense arguing with her. She's never going to understand that a $400 dovetail jig is an investment for the future. So here's what you do. You take it home and you wrap it in something really nice. I use newspaper. You might want to find something a little fancier. Put a bow on top and when she gets home you present it to her as a gift. The look in her eyes with excitement as she unwraps that, it'll make it well worth all the effort wrapping it. Now here's the critical part. She's going to be upset when she gets that box open and sees that it's not some fancy purse or a pair of shoes. Now's when you tell her, honey, I wanted to spend some quality time with you and I thought if we spent some time in the workshop, we could draw closer together. So I bought you this quality tool to get you started. She can't get mad at you because she's been on you for years to spend more time with her. And 10 minutes in the shop with all the dust and noise, she'll be back in the house and you'll be by yourself with your new tool. Then you can sit back, have a cold one, because you've earned it, my friend.